Here's something that your mini Moog cannot do. This box 11 setup is fully duophonic, not paraphonic, duophonic, as it can generate two sets of gates, two sets of pitches, two independent VCAs, two independent envelope generators, two independent filters, three VCOs. This particular setup is also particularly fun because it has a couple extra nuances to it. One set of pitches for the lead for the right hand goes first through the slew limiter, so it has portamento, then it controls the VCO, and then the VCO goes to the ladder filter and from there to the VCA, so that's pretty simple. For the left hand, however, we clone the pitch to two different VCOs, I tune them to a major tenth, so it does this like major chord. And then they go to the mixer and go into the filter. And so I have two very different characters. The right hand is mono, but has portamento and has a certain filter. But the left hand has two notes, like a double stop, kind of like a chord, and no portamento. So portamento mono for the lead, no portamento, two notes for the left hand all in one portable system, smaller than a Minimoog. Okay, here's two ways to make a kick sound out of your dot-com modular. One way is to drive the one volt per octave input of a VCO set as a sine wave with a short burst from an envelope generator. So we have the gate cloned into both envelope generators. One controls the VCA, set a pretty short decay into no sustain, and the other one is even shorter decay into no sustain, going into the one volt per octave input of the oscillator. The output goes into the mixer to drive the filter, and the filter is set to taste. It could be very low, it could be like pretty bright, can make it more nasal. You can drive it with a 2x or you can go, if you're gluttonous, you can go with it 100x. If you want to tune this kick, all you have to do is take the pitch, which we've not been using, and put it in the other available input of the one volt per octave. And at this point you can play like a keyboard. Add the 100x. The other way to do it is to use the same short envelope generator and drive the CV input of the filter, and it sounds like this. It gets punchier, and you have to fine tune exactly where you want it. You can have very, very punchy. You can have more of this like envelope if you tune it just at the right length. And just the right amount, you can get a sort of punchy heartbeat. And in this case, the pitch of the VCO is controlled by the regular pitch. It's still a sine wave going into the mixer, going into the filter. One way to create more complex waveforms as sources is to route several of the wave outputs from the 106 into the different channels of the mixer and then using the different volumes to blend in the different waves, make it in essence a wave mixer. And so you could have the regular saw. You can mix a little, a little triangle. This is all just with the mixer. You might think that mod wheel doesn't work in a dot-com system. Oh, but it does. The LFO++ module gives it to you, thanks to its included VCA. You simply go in mode number three, which gives you access to the CC1, which is the media signal from the mod wheel. You take the CC1 and you go into amplitude, which controls the amount of output from the LFO++. And then you take the LFO output and you go into this wonderful little add-in input. You set the LFO to low, speed and amp can be in the middle, and you balance how much of it you want between the mod wheel and the amplitude knob here. But basically...
You say, but Julio, I want to modulate the filter. I don't want to modulate the pitch. That's no problem. I got you. Instead of sending the output to the add-in of the pitch, you send the output into the CV input of the filter. My absolute favorite filter sound in the dot-com line is a three-pole ladder filter, which goes a bit into that 80s gummy bear roll-on territory. You'll see the ladder is a four-pole, and then at best you can select the optional two-pole on the front of the module. But hidden in the secret depths of this filter subconscious, there's a couple of jumpers which you can place on the pins one and four instead of two and five, so the lowest and the fourth from it, rather than the second from the bottom to the fifth, and that way you attain a three pole instead of a two pole for option number two. Four pole. Three pole. And here's the two pole. Bonus state variable set to sound like the ladder in two pole version. I consider the Mixer++ Plus Plus as fundamental to my sound as the ladder filter is or any of the VCOs. The reason is this switch that goes from X1, X2, and even the diabolical X100. And what it does is that it, it doubles the amplitude of the signal or multiplies it by 100. And uh, whereas uh, the 1X regular mixer sounds great, but also can get to 2x how much fatter it gets when it dries the filter that way again 1x and it's not just volume here's the 100 when it goes like fully like overdriven becomes kind of like a square wave directly from the saw that I'm driving into it. Unless I'm blending many signals and I don't want to fully overload the filter, the X2 is basically always on. The LFO++ is another module I cannot live without. Sure, it's an LFO and it can modulate things, but mostly it's an amazingly powerful and juicy VCO. It's a sound source. It can go both lower and higher than a regular VCO, so you can play... to LFO territory, but you can also go higher. And this is the lowest note in the register. You can go into inaudible stuff. So it has full range, but it has two fundamental advantages on the regular VCO. One is the fact that he has an included VCA. This amp knob can go from a regular sound. That's fine. Or... to basically fully overload it to the point where it becomes a, a, like a juicy square wave. If that wasn't enough, it also has a, a wave shaper, which can also make the wave thinner or fatter. So you can have the regular saw here, but you can square it out to favor it like low frequencies in the thing, or you can thin it out. You can make it fat from there, then juice up the amp.
no way you can do that with a regular VCR. Another classic trick is to put a high pass filter before your low pass filter paradoxically to add beefiness to your sound. So you set up your regular ladder wherever you want to. And then this is fine. But if you add the high pass just a smidget and then you boost the resonance you can get it where it's good for your particular key and it creates this woolly that otherwise you would miss because basically the resonance creates a boost exactly where you want it, low end, and at the same time cleans the sub lows which would make your mix muddy anyway. There's a simple way to add a microtonal vibe to your music without using a sequencer, which is that you desensitize the one volt per octave input. And uh, normally you would... Uh... Okay, it's tracking the notes, no problem. But if you all of a sudden put it, say, halfway through, you have to push the speed a little bit because... All of a sudden, then what is being translated from the MIDI notes is not semitones anymore, but it's whatever you decided to do. The less sensitive it is, the more they're like all... You can make it sound like a sample and hold, but actually control exactly the notes. And you can create all sorts of fun things. You can create it with like low end. So there you go. Microtonal sounding tones for your dot com box. This switch lets you choose between two fundamentally different ways of playing your synth. In essence, multiple means that when you play legato, which in synth land means pressing the next note before the prior note is fully released, each new note triggers a new gate signal, which means your envelopes are triggered, your VCA is triggered, any contour your design happens once per new note, like so. <laughs> All these bright attacks, I can make it more pronounced. I get the envelope and the VCA engaged every time I play a new note, no matter how fast, no matter how I play it, legato or non legato. When I go single, only the first note of a phrase triggers a gate, and as long as I play legato, the gate is not triggered again. Or things like this. So I can decide a very specific way of playing where the envelope is triggered only sometimes, creating these specific accents. Mm -hmm. 